Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood accountant. I just got back from my Thanksgiving vacation. I have a lot to say. I got to see the uh, recent tournament, um, Gwent Open, and I really enjoyed Asimov's movement deck. Even though the player didn't win the tournament, it was still, the deck inspired me. So I decided to recreate it to the best of my ability and play it in ranked. And I only lost one match between rank 17 and rank 18 with this deck. It's extremely efficient and consistent, and it allows me to deal with a wide range of decks that I see at that rank level, because I'm still seeing Weather Monster, and I can manipulate Weather, I mean movement decks, enough that it isn't too big of a problem. There's also the added benefit that if somebody muzzles one of my cards, it does trigger the movement effects, because it counts as moving. In our first game, we're up against a croc on crepe. One of the benefits of this deck is that you have Operator, you can copy one of the Agitators and that can really mess up your opponent's strategy. Now you notice that Wilhelm and the other Skull, they damage one point to the other side. So if I move this out of that row, it will not be, um, it will not be target hit by that one damage effect if he uses the Archer. Now he does get the strengthening effect, and I can't do much about that. But I'm going to aim to keep the uh, skull buffed up so that he can't just kill it and get the free bronze unit. Normally I would be playing weather at this point, but I don't really have access to it right now. If I had Scorch I'd be really happy right now, but I can't access Scorch since it's not a uh, silver unit. Brooverhoog was changed to pull um, silver units and bronze dwarves. I have plenty of bronze dwarves and I have plenty of silver units that I can access. This is an excellent time to use my, um, <laughs> what do you call it again? It's not Scorch, it's not Ragnarok, it's the opposite. Drought, there you go. People used to play it all the time, Drought. <laughs> So we see that we're up against Harpoons. Um, I have to balance my rows effectively to avoid getting hurt by the Harpoons. My opponent's playing into my storm weather. The longer this round goes on, the more benefit I get from my opponent playing into it. Because I have a Spy on there. I'm getting double card advantage out of this. I can easily catch up. Okay, use Muzzle. Had I had my Marksman on the board, it would have damaged the Roach. I have to be very careful about the number of units in my lanes because my opponent can easily take advantage of my lane placement to harpoon the Skull and get a free Bronze unit. I'm going to copy a unit. This will give my opponent a, bat, a worthless unit. Normally, I wouldn't do... Uh, if I'm going to copy a... Blue Mountain Commando, I'm going to do it in round one so I have more mulligan opportunities. I can only get a bronze unit with my leader ability because I drew into all my silvers that I can pull with Brooverhook. I decided to pull one of my own units here. Now, my opponent does something really weird here. He's overvaluing the skull. If he wanted to, he could easily remove my units just by putting them in and get free 7 damage in. But I think by doing that, he gets one point below what he needs to get rid of the Skull. There's nothing left I can really do um, about the Skull now. The reason why I move the uh, Princess Priestess of Frey in there is that I get like an extra point of damage that turn if I move the unit there. Uh, here's a situation where I want to move his Berserker into the... Uh, I should have moved the Berserker into the melee row, and it would have taken longer for it to get to the Berserker, arguably. Yeah, there were there were different decisions to do with the weather. I drew into both um, Blue Mountain Commandos, which is annoying, but I can live. I'm going to pass, instant pass, get another card advantage out of this. My opponent plays another Berserker. They're very they're not very useful in your grave in their graveyard. I push out the Blue Mountain Commando. Now I have four Blue Mountain Commandos to pull. For my deck which is fun. I know what my opponent's strategy is going to be. I'm going to just 
kill off his uh, priestess. This does weaken him a little bit, but it's not an important weaken because I have Scorch in my hand. I know he's trying to go for a giant uh, <laughs> unit on the board. Now, it was unfortunate that it hit that unit, but I'm actually happy in the end. Because he's just going to buff them, and I'm just going to get rid of it. it. Had it hit the bear, it might have been a little bit harder round to play. Okay. One of the most annoying things is to draw into Roach early. That was, that's what makes the third mulligan hard. In the mulligan here, you don't want the mercenaries and you don't want uh, extra Blue Mountain Commandos. The reason why you don't want Mercenaries is that you don't want to run into a dead Agitator. You want to play those Agitators earlier rather than later. This opponent's playing Spellatel. Um, that means I'm going to try to prevent my opponent from having units in all three rows because they're going to play it uh, my style, which is to have um, Mahakama Ales go off, with, in which you can play twice since it's an alchemy item. Arguably, I should be weakening off my uh, Yaven here, get it off the board sooner, but I don't think I'm going to get a chance to do that. Okay, here we're tied. I could easily just pass, but I don't want to. I'd rather win. The reason why I'm playing this instead of just instant passing is that I would I want to have um, Barkley Elves in my graveyard come round three. I don't agree with what my opponent did there. It was kind of overkill, but. He could have easily just thinned his deck instead of using the revive. I'm going to push out the protector because it's kind of useless to me. One of the benefits of playing operator on the final round is they cannot mulligan easily. The agitator that I'm going to copy, the agitator is not going to pull anything from my opponent because they're not running dwarves. I can already tell that they're setting up for ales. Um, so I'm going to kind of try to play around that to a degree. I'm going to give them some weather to do, but because they buffed out those units with ale, the weather doesn't, when it gets cleared, it won't um, protect my opponent. It won't remove the debuffs. Now here I make a mistake. I should not have hit Saskia there because when the weather gets removed, it's going to treat that as if I had just, it got damaged by weather. And I don't want that to happen. Okay. I'm fortunate that my opponent did not get a Mahakama Ale there, but they didn't have very many left at that point. Here I'm just trying to uh, prevent my opponent from getting those Ales out. No, I, I know I'm losing on three points every time I do this, but I prevent like four. In the long run. Another option is to kind of like steal his units, but it's getting too complicated at this point. Okay. That unit's slightly too much help for me to uh, take. And I know that one's the weaker of his units. I'm going to wait until he has the bigger ones onto the board before I... move it into the second row. The reason why I'm putting them all in this one big row together is it's less likely for the AL to hit um, his big unit and then put them at uneven strengths. The reason why I play Barkley Elves last is that if Barkley Elves pulled my last Dwarven Mercenary for whatever reason, uh, then I could get a dead door, um, have dead agitators in my hand. And since I have a lot of agitators in my hand, I want to avoid that. Fortunately, my opponent didn't have many of his Dothblana Protectors. He was going in for more for the buffs. 
Our next game is against Aridan. I can do a lot of controversial things in this game, but there is a kind of rhyme to this madness. A method to my madness, a rhyme to my reason. The first uh, play is I'm going to open up with Drought. That's not the controversial bit. The controversial bit here is I'm going to play Muzzle. And I shouldn't have done this probably in the long run, but the idea was I'm going to try to get rid of a Slizzard target for my opponent. Now it's not in the graveyard, he can't Slizzard it. People have moved away from um, Navigators towards Slizzards, since they're more effective card you're more likely to have something in your graveyard eventually especially if it's a high value card so that's a, just a copy i've actually had opponents mess up and at get uh, hurt from these kind of things. I'm going to open up with my Zoltan Shive here. The Shive is going to get a lot of value. Not only am I going to get rid of his uh, Giant Toad, I'm going to get rid of his Rider in the next turn. This prevents him from just throwing an Iris onto the board, but they're not going to play an Iris onto this anyways. So it might have been considered a bad move uh, since the Wild Hunt Rider wasn't really what was important here. Since he's not really using that extra damage effectively. He can remove stuff from my side of the board pretty fast. So I have to take that into account. I keep weakening off his Wild Hunt Rider because I know he's playing Iris style. I have a Weather Clear if he decides to play one more Weather. But I'm expecting more of his Drowners to come out. It, would, it wouldn't be bad if I just passed here. In my opinion, there aren't many things that I'm afraid of my opponent pulling from my deck. I'm just trying to get rid of those Wild Hunt Riders, and I think waiting this long is actually making it easier for my opponent. I should be moving high health targets into the middle instead of low health ones. Okay, now he's put out a Iris. I'm going to try to protect the Iris. The problem is, is my, my opponent has Drowners, so there's not much I can do about that. By putting it in the front row, he can't just push it into weather. I can Hattori out my um, <laughs> Barkley Elves. Another option was to play Yaven. Since I'm way ahead of my opponent, Yaven would have been a good way to get a lot of points really fast. Here's another situation where I could have easily just passed. Okay, my opponents, I have no way of uh, preventing that. It is possible that I could have won this round. Um, because he's he would have only had... He would have lost an extra three, and he I know one of the cards in his hand was dead. And the what card that was dead in his hand happened to be Scorch, I think. So, that's how I won that. I played underneath his Scorch. Which I could do because I saved my Blue Mountain Commanders for the very end of the game. In this game, I'm up against Skellige again. I've been running into self-wounding a lot. Now this is, seems dumb because I, I want to muzzle that guy. But then I got a slightly juicier target. I'm going to muzzle off his... His uh, carryover unit. Arguably, I should have just taken his um, unit that would have buffed up to uh, 9. But he would have used Muzzle himself, since he everybody runs Muzzle. Because the self-wounding card would have buffed up to 9, and then it would be down of Muzzle range. Now I'm looking to get rid of his um, Pain Train, as I like to call it. Now, you notice that because he pulled it over, he, he gets hit several times. It's one reason to muzzle that one instead of his boat. Because if he pulls it over, he's going to just damage his own unit. So he revives that. Um, and I can continue moving his unit 
which will do six damage to it every time I do it. And it can't hit any targets, so the pain train doesn't grow. He has that. The way to interrupt this is with my leader ability. Once I think about it. So I can pull out Yaven and put it in between the cow and the light longboat ship. And this interrupts that. It also allows me to draw into one of my golds. Since it is a special and I only have like three specials in this entire deck. Now I'm overplaying into this round. I'm not going to have a very good uh, target for Operator. I was unfortunate to draw into Roach, but that's what I get for mulliganing three times. You run risks when you do that. Now we're in a situation where this, my opponent is just running a ton, I mean like a metric ton of resiliences uh, in hopes that he can just beat me with them. I'm actually kind of a cocky player. I don't really mind the resiliences at all. I thin my deck pretty harsh, strongly, so I only have really good cards left, and this Scorch is excellent. I'm going to love this Scorch. I'm going to push out Operator because the Operator doesn't do much for me. My opponent goes first. Well, actually, I go first because I won, sorry. I'm going to move that unit out of the way so it can't trigger the um, cow. Now I see four... Seven uh, strength units on the board, three of which are his, and I don't mind killing all that. I'm going to play out the Drought first, because Drought does more damage over time, so I want to do that first. Move one of his units into that row, and I win by a large margin there. Get a lot of value out of my Drought, and I rank up to rank 18. So <laughs> that was fun. Scorch sometimes is one of those cards that just, out of nowhere huge effect and that's why i love it so much well thanks for watching i'm going to be looking through those financials tomorrow and i'll have a video for you guys